Hi everyone, welcome to a lesson on inference of message. What I always like to say to students is that inference of message is another very basic SBQ skills. It's almost like the cousin of inference of content. So let's get started. So how do you know whether or not this is an inference of message question? I think the most straightforward way to, for us to know is that they will ask you what is the message of the cartoon or the source. Of course, there are other different ways that they can go about asking you for inference of message. So for example, they can ask you for the cartoonist's opinion or what um, is the cartoonist or the source giver's attitude or whether or not the source giver is a supporter. So the main thing that you always have to do is try to ask yourself, what is the main point that the source is trying to say? Because that is the message. So how to answer in terms of structure? I would say that um, just think of this acronym, Very Angry Mother Cooking. So V is verb. What is the source trying to do? So this is where I'll need you to think of a verb or a strong motive word. So for example, I always ask students to just memorize some standard sets of verbs like persuade, convince, criticize. These are common verbs that you can always use for both SS and history. So just some, memorize some basic motive words of verbs so that you can just use it as a word bank and don't need to really think about it so much when you're answering your question. Uh, second is audience. Think to yourself, who is the target audience? Could, is it Singaporeans? Is it international community? It could be anyone. How do you know who is the target audience? Always check their provenance to see who the speaker is, where, and where, when did he exactly make this speech in order to find out the target audience. Followed by message. What is the main message or main inference that can come up from the source? Evidence and explanation as well as context. But of course, context is really the... Um, it's not really irrelevant for social studies, it's more towards for history because we learned the historical content related to the source. So if you're doing inference or message for a historical source, always ask yourself what is happening at the time when the source was created? What exactly is happening behind the scenes? So for example, we have source A, a statement about Ali from the principal during morning assembly. So Ali scored distinctions for all his subjects in his recent O-levels exams despite the challenges he faced when he was a student. So I would say that what's the message of the source? I would say that perhaps the source giver is trying to praise, motivate, even encourage the target audience because it's, um, the speech is being held during the morning assembly. I would say that the target audience are the students. Uh, the target audience is the students in the morning assembly. Okay, so how do I answer inference or message? Step one. Always read the background information. This is especially important for social studies because all of your SBQ or all your sources are actually decontextualized. You wouldn't exactly know about the topic beforehand unless you're really, really very well read. Um, so yes, so you only learn about the topic through background information. If you, if you don't read your background information, I always see students misinterpreting the source or not exactly getting the full picture that the source is trying to say. So always make sure that you read your background information, especially for social studies. For history, it's really just to get an understanding on the focus of the paper. Just in case maybe you blank out, you suddenly cannot remember what's the topic about. Just get an understanding on the focus of the paper by reading the background information. Step two, read your provenance. If you don't know what your provenance is, provenance is essentially the caption of the source with all the important information related to the source. So I always like to tell students that provenance contains all the important hints that the paper setter, or yes, basically essentially the paper setter wants you to know. So always read your provenance. Okay, so let's try our inference or message on a history example first. So right now, I have a source from an article published on the Shonan Shimbun, the official newspaper by the Japanese for people in Singapore during the Japanese occupation. The question is, study source A, what is the message of this source? Okay, what I always say to students is that if you struggle to think about what is the strong verb relevant for this source, I always say leave a space first. We'll revisit this later. Let's jump on to the audience because it, it tends to be easier. So look at the audience, ask yourself, who is it targeted to read the provenance? So if you look at the provenance, uh, it's a Shona Shimbun, the official newspaper by the Japanese for Singapore, for the people in Singapore on 28 Feb 1942. So ask yourself, who will be reading this? So obviously the people reading this will be the people of Shonanto. So after we have established who the audience is, move on to the message. 
cover the sauce, ask yourself, what is the main point that the sauce is essentially trying to tell you? So if I look at the sauce, the main points that the sauce is trying to tell me is that anyone going against the Japanese will be punished, they will be considered enemies, they will be supposedly removed for shonan safety. So now I'll just write the message in one sentence succinctly. Any form of Japanese threats will be eliminated to ensure the stability and security of Shonanto. So now that we have established who our audience is and what is our message, it should be easier for us to come up with the verb. So ask yourself, if this is the message, that, okay, that any form of Japanese threats will be eliminated, eliminated by the Japanese to ensure security of Shonanto, and this, is, this message is being pushed out to the people in Shonanto, what essentially is this source trying to do? Because the message is very strong, trying to say that okay, if you go against the Japanese, that's it. You are dead, you'll be eliminated. You feel some sort of like a very threatening tone for it. So the verb that I will probably use for this is warn. Because the message itself is very strong. It's a warning that if anyone goes against the Japanese, they will not live to see the day. So as usual, for every source-based question, make sure that you have evidence and explanation. So these are the evidence that I have plucked out. So essentially from the evidence that I have plucked out from the source, I can say that this means that anti-Japanese activities will not be tolerated by the Japanese who would be willing to kill for what they perceive as a greater good for the rest of Shonan. So now we have our verb, audience, message, evidence, explanation. We are just left with context. For context, look at the provenance, when is it published, who is talking, ask yourself what is happening behind the scenes. For history, when you're answering inference of message, it's very important for you to always write about the context of the source. Because the moment you don't have the context of the source, even if let's say your verb, your audience, your message is correct, you will not be able to get your full marks question. Because history requires you to tap into your historical knowledge to gain understanding of the source. So if I take a look at this 28 February 1942, I should know that this means that we are currently in the middle of Japanese occupation. So what is happening behind the scenes? Since this is the middle of Japanese occupation, Japan, the Japanese wants to ensure that they retain their control over the people. So that is what I should be writing in my context. This source was published in 28 February 1942 when, ja when Singapore was already deep within the Japanese rule or the Japanese occupation and the Japanese wanted to ensure that their power in the country is consolidated or maintained. So now I have broken down my answer into verb, audience, message, evidence, explanation and context. This is how your answer will look like in a paragraph. You see that I have color-coded the acronym that I was talking about just now into this paragraph. So this acronym that I was that I'm going through with you is supposed to be like a structure for you to follow to ensure that your answer flows. Right. So now let's move on and do a social studies example. So like um, as said just now, for social studies, always make sure that you spend 3 to 5 minutes reading through the background information first before jumping straight into answering the question. So please take some time, pause this video if necessary to read the background information. We are currently looking at a source about whether or not the cross island line should cross the central catchment nature reserve. So this is the source. Source A is a cartoon published in the Straits Times on 4th March 2016 about plans to build the Cross Island Line. The question is, what is the message for the source? So similarly for the verb, leave a space first. We will revisit this later. Let's take a look at the audience. Who is this source targeted towards? Ask yourself, who has a say over deciding the building of Cross Island Line? Obviously in this case, it would be the Singapore government because the Singapore government decides on whether or not they want to build certain facilities. Now that we have established who the audience is, cover the source, ask yourself what is the main point that the source is essentially trying to tell you. Now if you look at the source, the main idea that you can come across is we see fear because the, um, the mountain looks kind of scared. So we see fear as the train goes through the central catchment nature reserve. If the train goes through the central catchment nature reserve, we can infer that okay, um, since this nature reserve or this hill looking cartoon has flora and fauna on it, we can immediately infer that there's a form of destruction going on. So what I need you to do is to combine both ideas together into one succinct sentence for inference for your message. So I will say that the building of the cross island line is detrimental to the, um, the CCNR in showing how it may stress out 
the flora and fauna in the nature reserve. So because this is a very strong message and it, this source is essentially trying to tell us that if we build a cross island line, there will be very terrible or very detrimental effects on nature itself. It's a very strong message to the Singapore government. So always ask yourself, if you're not happy with how an authority is going about doing something, in regards to a certain policy, in regards to how certain things are run, how do you express this unhappiness? You always tend to criticise. So the verb that we are looking at here is actually criticise. So we see fear as the train goes through the hill, the train goes through the hill that has flora and fauna on it, so we can infer that this is destruction. That should be in your um, evidence and explanation. So as spoken just now, context is not exactly applicable for social studies as much as history. So now that I've broken down what I want to write for my inference or message in um, the structure that I was talking to you about, this is how your answer will look like in the paragraph. Similarly, I have underlined and color-coded the important parts or the structures of how to answer inference or message in a paragraph here. So essentially what we are doing is the same. We What we did was, we just broke it down in the table form first. Now I'm just showing you how your inference or message answer will look like as a paragraph. A lot of students ask me, um, how many paragraphs should I do for inference or message? This for inference or message is always just one paragraph. So this whole structure here, just do one paragraph. Just do it one time. Okay, so some quick tips. Um, I'll always encourage students to spend 10 to 15 minutes per question. Really make sure that you time yourself. Keep checking the clock. Make sure that you're spend, not spending too long on the question because the moment you go beyond 15 minutes for this question, this means that you're giving yourself lesser time to work on more difficult skills. And I always tell students, if you struggle to formulate your message, close the source with your head with what? Uh, close the source with your hand. Imagine that you're kind of explaining the source to someone, that you have to summarize the main ideas that the source is talking about in one sentence. The moment you do it, that is actually your message. So pretend that you're talking to someone, summarize what the source is saying essentially in your own words. 